Hi friends, in my contribution to the PeaceCast, I'd like to read to you a passage from a book that I've been reading while I was studying psychology. The book is called Man's Search for Meaning and was written by Viktor Frankl, a Jewish psychiatrist who, in 1944, had to spend one year in a German concentration camp. Based on the experiences and what he witnessed during that time, Frankl later came up with a therapy called Logotherapy. Frankl thought that people can overcome pretty much any struggle if they have a meaning in their life. Part of the process of his therapy would be to find out who, how you want to react to the things that happen around you. And that is what the passage is about that I'm going to read to you. So I invite you to listen to the words here. In wrote. attempting this psychological presentation and a psychopathological explanation of the typical characteristics of a concentration camp inmate, I may give the impression that a human being is completely and unavoidably influenced by his surroundings. But what about human liberty? Is there no spiritual freedom in regard to behavior and reaction to any given surroundings? Is that theory true, which would have us believe that man is no more than a product of many conditional and environmental factors, be they of a biological, psychological or sociological nature? Is man but an accidental product of these? Most important, do the prisoners' reactions to the singular world of the concentration camp prove that man cannot escape the influences of his surroundings? Does man have no choice of action in the face of such circumstances? We can answer these questions from experience as well as on principle. The experiences of camp life show that man does have a choice of action. There were enough examples, often of a heroic nature, which proved that apathy could be overcome, irritability suppressed. Man can preserve a vestige of spiritual freedom, of independence of mind, even in such terrible conditions of psychic and physical stress. We who lived in concentration camps can remember the men who walked through the huts, comforting others, giving away their last piece of bread. They may have been few in number, but they offer sufficient proof that everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. And there were always choices to make, every day, every hour, offered the opportunity to make a decision, a decision which determined whether you would or would not submit to, the, submit to those powers which threatened to rob you of your very self, your inner freedom, which determined whether or not you would become the plaything of circumstance, renouncing freedom and dignity to become molded into the form of the typical inmate. Seen from this point of view, The mental reactions of the inmates of a concentration camp must seem more to us than the mere expression of certain physical and sociological conditions. Even though conditions such as lack of sleep, insufficient food and various mental stresses may suggest that the inmates were bound to react in certain ways, in the final analysis it becomes clear that the sort of person the prisoner became was the result of an inner decision and not the result of camp influences alone. Fundamentally, therefore, any man can, even under such circumstances, decide what shall become of him, mentally and spiritually. He may retain his human dignity even in a concentration camp. Dostoevsky said once, there is only one thing that I dread, not to be worthy of my sufferings. These words frequently came to my mind and after I became acquainted with those martyrs whose behavior in camp, whose suffering and death bore witness to the fact that the last inner freedom cannot be lost. It can be said that they were worthy of their sufferings. The way they bore their sufferings was a genuine inner achievement. It is this spiritual freedom which cannot be taken away that makes life meaningful and purposeful. Thank you.